It's been a good week. E46 M3, BMW 1M, and now this, the Ford Mustang. But this ain't no ordinary Mustang. Oh no, this one is the Mustang Bullet, and it's to celebrate 50 years of the most iconic car chase and movie of all time. Bullet, starring Steve McQueen. We'll talk about that later on when we go for a drive, but let's talk about Ford Mustangs because obviously if you're British or someone who's European and you're used to stuff like AMGs, BMW M cars, etc., etc., and if you're used to the channel, you'll obviously know the fact that, you know, there's quite a lot of European cars. So you might look at this Ford Mustang as a bit of a, a muscle car that's a bit lazy, not dynamic to drive, but oh no, no, especially this particular facelift Mustang. It's actually very, very good to drive. Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect, but we'll talk about it once we go out for a spin. But before we do that, please hit the bell notification icon, hit the subscribe button as well too, to make sure that you watch this guy acting like an idiot and trying to know stuff about cars. Anyway, let's go for a drive. I've been driving possibly two of the finest M cars that have come out, the BMW E46 M3 and the BMW 1M, which are basically precision, ultimate driving, delicate. Well, the 1M's not delicate, it's a bit of a sledgehammer really, and it's a little bit, let's say, frisky on the limit. But nonetheless, they're very sophisticated cars, and now I'm driving something that's say lazy but very laid back very big brawny and it's got a big five liter v8 but i quite like that i like the fact that i get to drive in different cars but we're keeping in that same theme of front engine rear wheel drive with a six-speed manual gearbox except that those cars are pretty much 10 15 years old whereas this you can buy one of these per day now the Ford Mustang in the UK to some of the American viewers, we've only had this car for five years. 2015 was when Ford allowed to bring the Mustang over to the UK in right-hand drive with a five liter V8. You can have it with a 2.3 liter UK boost, but why would you have that? It's just pointless in my opinion. And they facelifted the car about a couple of years ago, about 18 months back. And to celebrate 50 years of possibly the most iconic car chase and the most iconic movie, starring possibly one of the coolest actors ever, Steve McQueen in the movie Bullet. They wanted to recreate that because obviously in that movie they had a 1968 Mustang in Highland Green chasing a Dodge Charger up and down San Francisco. That movie set the trend of car chases. Without that movie, you wouldn't have stuff like the Bourne Identity car chases, the James Bond car chases, the Fast and Furious, Smoking the Bandit, etc. So that movie is special to most people and for me it's actually a very special movie because it's Steve McQueen actually driving a Mustang, doing the burnouts, doing all that sort of driving. What actor now, apart from Tom Cruise, does his own stunt in terms of driving and if you know another actor of another movie of another car chase then uh, write a comment in the YouTube section down below. Anyway, I need to review this car and tell you what this car's like. So, it costs nearly 50 grand, give or take. It's got a five liter V8. What differentiates this car to a normal Mustang? Well, first off, they all come in one color, this lovely Highland green. I love a green car, mate, I think it's lovely. The interior's got a few trinkly bits. Um, you can spec it with these lovely Recaro bucket seats, which I think is just awesome and really comfy and really supportive. You can get it with a six-speed manual gearbox and you get this really nice white gear knob to pay homage to the old school Mustang. You get those classic design wheels as well too. You get a few D badges as well too. You don't get the Mustang at the front symbol and you don't get the 5 litre V8 down the side which I quite like. Performance wise you get a few extra horsepowers uh, than the standard car so this one is running 465 horsepower and you get a few Ford performance bits as well too. So you've got six piston front brake calipers from Brembo, which are actually very, very good. We get to that later on. And you also get different driving modes. Spec this car with the 
magnetic dampers. Yes, you can get magnetic dampers on a Mustang, and um, I would definitely recommend it because it gives a split personality to this car. You also get so many driving modes. In fact, I'll go through them right now. So we've got uh, drag strip mode, which is basically a way of launching the car. Normal, you've got uh, my mode, which is like a sort of half in between. You can adjust the steering. You've got Sport Plus, and you've got race mode which basically changes the well in front of the dash I've got this TFT display which is actually really nice really cool really clear and in different driving modes you get different sort of things which I quite like personally inside you get quite a lot of equipment you get air conditioning of course you get uh, DAB and you get Apple car connectivity all that stuff and yeah the, the, the cabin quality is fair you know it's 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 not a BMW um, it's not an AMG, but it's a lot better from Mustangs of old, you know, Mustangs from two generations past. This has come a long way. For me, I'm, it doesn't bother me too much. I'm all about the driving experience. As long as it doesn't squeak or rattle, which this car doesn't, then you're absolutely fine. So Mustangs, well, they're a muscle car, aren't they? They've got a big V8. The handling's a bit woolly. No, because obviously in the 2015 Mustang, when it first arrived, it was the first Mustang to come with independent rear suspension. All Mustangs before that had a live rear axle, which basically meant that it had the handling sophistication of a pram. Um, and it meant that it was very skittish and lively. If you hit a bump under load, under throttle with all drive cars, you end up having a big accident. Hence why there's a lot of Mustangs and car meets going into crowds and people, etc. The thing I want to know is, is this Ford Mustang a proper sports car? And also, should you spend the extra cash to buy this bullet version? Well, let's talk about the way it drives first, because actually in the normal driving modes where you can set the dampers into its normal setting, I found that this car is very GT-like in the sense of it's very quiet, it's very refined, it's very civilized, the seats are comfy, the damping and control in this car is actually very, very good. And yes, the car is a bit massive on the road, it's quite large, but it feels light, nimble and sharp as well too. And in certain modes, you've got the blip on the downship, which I have on at the minute, I'm gonna turn it off to do my own healing and tow. But if you don't know how to do heel and tow, it's actually quite handy. So, what's also quite nice is, it's not an intimidating car to drive, and also, to enjoy it, I'm doing like normal speeds right now, I've got the exhaust on, I've got that lovely five litre V8 just singing away, burbling away, it's actually quite nice to just have your elbow like that and chill and cruise along, no problems at all. Notch the driving modes up a bit, you start giving the engine a few more revs, and first off you get that lovely V8, it wants to rev, it loves to rev. And then also you find out that the brakes, the pedal feel is actually bang on, really nice. And also the steering, it's got a few modes, which if I'm honest, I'm not a fan of juggling around the settings, but hey, it's a new car, that's the thing nowadays. It actually wakes up quite nice. The harder you push it, the less likely this car is gonna fall apart because at first on the move, when you're driving it slow, you think that this car's going to be a bit of a barge, and don't get me wrong, this car weighs a thick end of 1.8 tonnes, but it wants to go, it actually wants to haul. What I quite like about these damper modes is, yes, they're adjustable, but you've got quite a nice bit of lean in the car as well too, and it gives you a nice sense of communication of what's going on. Don't get me wrong, it's not the most well-balanced car. It feels a bit front-heavy because you've got that V8 up front, but you've got a Torsen limited slip differential. You've got quite a lot of good, sophisticated components, and this car is surprisingly sophisticated. So then, here you have it with this Ford Mustang Bullet. What a surprising car. I thought I would pick holes with it, but there's hardly not much to say bad about this car. Yes, it's a it's a bit large and it's not the most nimble car in the world, but it's an American muscle car. And to be honest, this compared to the previous generation Mustang, it's, it's far, far more competent, more compliant, more comfortable as well too. Um, like I said, we live in a world now where everything's turbocharged. 
everything's got automatic gearboxes soon we're gonna have EVs if you want something that's got basically an old-fashioned driving experience then look no further then look no further with this Ford Mustang bullet and for me in this green I think it's the one to have 50 grand does sound like a lot for a Ford but once you break it down it isn't at all anyway thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe and if you're an owner out there and you'd like to chuck the keys to a car like me and hoon it around then dm me on instagram at sid.north until next time folks see you later